This is Miss Jackie, and I'm so glad to be back. It's been a long time since I've done a story time. Uh, the last one I did was for Thanksgiving, and I wanted to do a Christmas one, but I got busy with Christmas things and my family, and then I got busy building my website, and it's been until now before I could get in and start uh, and do a story time. So today, since spring is just around the corner, and one of my favorite spring holidays, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, I thought I would do one of my very, very favorite books. In fact, when I taught school, I read this book to my class every single year. I just love it. It's called Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato by Tommy DePoa. And he wrote the story and he illustrated the pictures. So remember, writing the story, the author is the person who writes the words, the illustrator is the person who does the pictures. And Tommy DePoa did both of them. Now, in the little letters right here, we say an Irish folk tale. So with it being St. Patrick's Day coming up and it says Irish folk tale, I bet we can take a guess that maybe there might be a leprechaun in this story. Leprechauns are known to be out and about. I've already heard little whispers of their mischief that they're getting into. So be watching out for them. And remember, if you catch them, you get don't let go of them because they have to give you your pot of gold. But they're very, very tricky. And we're going to find out just how tricky they can be in this story. But before we get started, let's get a little background information first. So if it's an Irish Folk tale. That means it's a story handed down from Ireland. Ireland is another country. It's actually an island close to England. And um, they are known to have green pastures. And that's where they say the leprechauns come from. They also are known for growing potatoes. Now, certain areas grow what grows well in their area. And in Ireland, there was a time that potatoes were their main crop. And a crop is more than just a garden. It's just a big bunch of one thing that somebody might grow to help feed uh, a community or their family. Um, and so in Ireland, they grew potatoes. And one of the words that they use to, for potatoes in Ireland is pratty. So you're gonna hear me say pratty in this story, and that means potato. Now, I also wanna talk, I always try to do a little phonics thing, and I'm gonna keep it kinda of short with my phonics, it's, but it's a very, very important lesson that I want you to pay attention to. When you sound out your consonants, like J and R and B and P. We've got to remember that those consonants do not have an uh sound attached to them. Here in Kentucky, sometimes our accent gets in our way and we'll throw in an uh, like sometimes somebody, I'll hear someone say that M says M or B says B or P says P. They don't say that. The only letter that says uh is the U. The U says uh, except it doesn't say it in this word, but the U is the only letter that can say uh. J says j, not j, j. M says m, not m. R says r, not r. And K says not K. P says P, P, P. You turn your voice off for that. You don't turn it on and say P. B says B, B, B. And G says G, G, G. All right, so remember that. And that is going to help you with your writing and sounding out words like you wouldn't believe. And your teachers will thank you for it. All right, so remember, J says J. M says M, R says R, K says K, 
B says B, P says P, L, like in leprechaun, says L. It does not say L or La. It says L, L, leprechaun, L. All right, so let's get started with our story. I want you to listen for two things. I want you to listen for the character of the story and the setting of the story. Characters are the main people in the story or animals, depending on what kind of story we have. And the setting is where the story takes place. All right. Now, sometimes when I've read this to my students, I would try to put in a little Irish accent. So I may try that with this story. So if I do, just know that's what, that's what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had to do with growing potatoes. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the praties. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get up out of this bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seed. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village women said. Why, it's the first, she's re first rest she's had since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no pratties all winter, and no pratties meant no food. Oh, poor me! Well, Jamie, I'll starve to death. I'd best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking on me door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Sure, and I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held firm. Let me go, let me go the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now everyone in Ireland knows the leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Motorman, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fatty shoes, and I only have one or two pieces of gold in my pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for? Jamie asked. Me, who's about to die of starvation because me wife is sick in bed and can't dig the pratties for the winter. And there are such puny pratties anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket. You could wish for the biggest pratty in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant this seed, water it, and wait. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. 
done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails and off that leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie Rock, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well, giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed. Well, I'm going to plant this seed and what water it, and you'll see, Jamie said, and out he went. And Faith Island did see, in no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from? They asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why, anyone could have gotten a part of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world? Well, that took some doing. However, did you smart a... Excuse me. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun? They all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you'll tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until a potato flew up out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. What? to do now. That pratty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do? The villagers wailed. Then they all looked at Jamie and said, it's your pratty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up, there's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't you all take some? So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potato to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to see or hear of potato again. So let's look here. They've got like boiled potatoes and mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes and mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, a lot of potatoes. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for the seed and it's just about time to plant it. Oh no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before the St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. And look at the end. Remember that leprechaun? Do you remember how he got away from Jamie O'Rourke? I think he told him that he was not making a lot of money with his fairy shoes, that he was just starting out and he didn't have hardly any gold. But look at that pot. Hmm. I believe this leprechaun was pretty tricky. All right, I love this story. Let's go back and let's remember, I asked you to kind of focus in on the characters 
and the setting. So let's talk about the character and the main character. The main character is who the story is mostly about. And that is the story that, that is the character who has the problem or who seems to be in the story a whole lot. And his name is also in the title. So I believe the main character is Jamie O'Rourke. And then we have some other characters that are important to the story. Now there's the villagers, but we don't want to name all those. Right? Eileen is a character. Remember, she's doing all the work. And let's see who else is important to the story. I believe it is, well, I can get the page turned. There we go. The leprechaun. The leprechaun is important to the story because he kind of sets up the problem. There's lots of problems going on in our story, but the main problem is Jamie O'Rourke catches him and he wants his gold. The leprechaun tricks him to let him go and gives him that giant potato seed. And then when the potato gets so big, it gets stuck. So the problem here is how are they going to get in and out of the village? How are they going to get this potato out? And Eileen suggested there's enough potato for everybody. And they all cut it up and shared it. Although they didn't want to have that many potato dinners during the winter. And so they offered to supply Jamie and Eileen with food for the rest of their life. And he would never have to dig potatoes again. Potatoes are hard work to dig. They are. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that story. Now, I usually do a little art lesson. And today, I'm going to include a little drawing lesson. Now, I did this with my students in my studio last week, and they really enjoyed it. Sometimes when I'm drawing with my students, I don't tell them what we're drawing. And I just tell them to draw this and draw that, and draw this line here, and then they have to try to guess what it is. And so I am gonna see if I can do that with you guys. All right, so I'm gonna start in the middle of my paper. And when I draw or sketch, I don't bear down really, really hard. Now see, that is a dark line. If I mess up, I'm gonna bring this up. If I mess up that and need to erase it, that's hard to erase. It doesn't want to go away very well. But if I do a soft line, that's easier to erase. And you don't see it, see? So I'm gonna do a soft, sketchy line. And I'm gonna kind of explain this. I'm gonna zoom in as I go. And I'm gonna get my, my paper comfortable for me, my pencil comfortable, and now I'm ready to get started. So I'm gonna start, and this is just like a small little doodle. So you can start wherever you want to. You might wanna just start in the middle of your page. I'm gonna start with an oval. An oval is like a stretched out, circle. And so notice I'm sketching. I'm just doing some soft lines until I see the line that I want. Okay. Then above this line, I'm going to put just a slightly curved line like this. Hmm. Wonder what it is. And I'm going to put another slightly curved line just above it. Now shapes and lines are elements of art. You've got to have them. And I've always said when you draw, they're just simple shapes and lines. If you break something down into their lines and shapes, it makes it a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to close it off right here. So now I've taken those two lines and connected them and made them into a shape. Okay. And I'm gonna go right about here and I'm going to draw a line here and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna draw a line here, okay? Then I'm going to close, well, I'm gonna wait on that. I'm gonna go just under my oval 
and I'm going to draw what's going to look like a pond in a way. It's a stretched out oval, a stretched out skinny oval. And then I'm going to put another line underneath, just like this. Mm. Wow, wonder what we've got. Okay, now my paper is a little, let me do it this way. All right, so I'm going to go in here now and I'm gonna close up this there and I'm gonna close up this there. Wow, wonder what that could be. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go to this shape right here it up just a little bit so I have plenty of room and I'm going to draw a curved line here and then I'm going to draw a curved line here I bet some of you are figuring out what this is now I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to close this up and I'm going to close it up with a line that is just slightly curved in curved actually curved out just like this. All right, there we go. Yeah. Let's bring this out. It looks a little off. There we go. All right, so see, because I've done light lines, I can erase my mistakes a lot easier. There we go. Ah, oh, wonder what this could be. Hmm. I'm gonna round this side out just a little bit more. See if I can match it up with this one. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go back up to these two lines right here, and I'm going to put a line going across there and close that up. I bet some of you are figuring out what this is. I'm gonna go right to the middle of this shape right here, which kind of looks like a top hat to me. And right above this oval, I'm going to put a square right there, all right? So look at the shapes we have. We have an oval. This is kind of curved, but it looks a little bit like an oval. This looks like a type of a rectangle and this is a square. And inside that square, I'm going to put another square. There we go. Just like that. Wonder what it is. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to put a line going across here and a line going across there. So that might be a hat. That might be a hat band. Oh, I wonder what it is. I'm gonna go right here, and I'm going to put another oval right here, and I'm going to put another oval here. And then I'm going to put these lines right there. And let's see, I put one, I put one, two, three, four lines. So I'm gonna put four lines here, one, two, three, four. And the lines are touching this, which kind of looks like a pot to me. All right, I'm gonna go back up to this oval and right on the side, I'm going to draw a line like this and I'm gonna draw a line like this. It almost looks like a spider with legs, doesn't it? But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the middle of this and I'm going to connect it there and connect it there. Mm, what is that? If you've guessed a gnome leprechaun, I think you're right. So I'm gonna fill out the rest of his beard and hair, which is gonna go here. And then he's gonna have some coming over here. And then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm gonna put some hairs right here under that mustache, just like that. 
And then I want his beard. Now when I fill in his beard, I'm going to draw my lines in the direction that his beard and hair would be growing, which would be down. See? And he'd have some going this way. And he might have some going this way. And he might even have a few little hairs kind of blowing in the wind here. There we go. All right, now uh, I'm gonna put, since we know now that this is a leprechaun gnome, I'm going to put a shamrock in his hat or what they call a four leaf clover or a three leaf clover. So I'm just gonna put the little stem coming out like that. And then to make that shamrock, which I'm gonna make mine a four leaf clover, it's just gonna be like a flower with four petals. One, two, three, four. And then I want to put some gold in his pot. Now, his pot, this is the opening. When you look at this cup, the opening is round because you're looking right down in it. But when you look at it, when I turn it like this, now the opening looks like an, an oval. See how the opening looks like an oval? Well, that's the view that we're seeing with our pot. And it's the same thing with the gold. The gold is round. It's a circle, but when it's turned over on its side, it's going to have an oval look. So I'm going to put lots of little ovals in here. And I can stack a few on top. Because maybe our leprechaun has a lot of gold. So I might make it pile up here. Okay. Now, right now, my leprechaun and my pot of gold are floating in the air. So I need to anchor them down. I need to put a ground down here so it doesn't look like they're floating. So remember, grass grows all different directions. So I'm going to put some grass going this way and some grass going this way. And I'm gonna put some right in front. Maybe, there we go. And maybe I'm gonna put some shamrocks in here. And maybe I'll have a three leaf one. There we go. And I'm gonna put some over here. And let's put one over here. And maybe one right here. There we go, very good. Well, now that I have my leprechaun gnome drawn, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now I'm gonna pretend that I have a light source coming this way. My light is on this side. So all the light is coming in and it's going to hit everything on this side, okay? Now don't you draw those arrows. I'm gonna erase those, but I just want you to know that that's where the light is coming from. So if the light is coming from this side, that means this side is not getting as much light and it's gonna be in shadow. So to show that, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to shade this just a little bit, kind of like coloring. And I'm gonna get lighter as I get closer to the light, but this side is going to be the darkest. Okay, so I'm gonna same thing on the hat band. I'm gonna kind of shade that in. This is what gives your piece form, makes it look 3D. Now he'll have a little bit of shadow under his under his mustache. He'll have a little bit of shadow on this side of his nose and underneath. 
he'll definitely have some shadow under that hat band because that's gonna keep the sun from his nose and his eyes. I'm also going to put a little bit of a shadow right here on the brim of his hat and definitely make this darker. So see, now that I've sketched him and I have my lines in, now I can go back and I can find the ones that I like and darken them up a little bit. Like there might, might be a little bit of shine right there. Okay. Now the same thing with his hands and the pot. Now I'm gonna turn this a little bit like this so it'd be easier for me to shade. But this is going to be in shadow because his hand is hiding it and the light is not getting there. So I'm going to darken this up right here because this is gonna be in shadow underneath the rim of the pot. And I'm just gonna darken that up a little. And then I'm gonna darken up my pot. Now what I'm also doing is I want this pot to look round like this. So I'm going to make my lines go in this direction, not up and down. Now there are different ways to shade. Some can do a crosshatch. George Surratt did points, little dots. You could do that away. Um, I like to shade like this just to show my form, okay? And then see, I get dark, I'm darker on this side and then I get lighter as I get closer to the light. All right. Now there would probably be a shadow right in here, but we've also got our grass in here. There. And there you have a cute little Nomi Leprechaun. So I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you enjoyed the drawing lesson. I have plans of showing you something neat that you can do with this drawing, but that'll have to be for another video because I've already gone longer than I hoped. But um, I hope you enjoy this and I want you to practice your drawing and I'll see you next time and maybe we can do something special with this drawing. Everybody have a good day, bye. Thank you.